Hello and in this video I want to talk to you a bit about finders titles in the English legal system. Now to do this I just want to go over four quick cases. So the first is Costello uh, and the Chief Constable of Derbyshire. Now in this case what essentially happened is the police thought that this car was stolen. So they got the car and they kept it while they were investigating but they couldn't find out who the real owner was now they kept it for longer than the statutory um leeway so in statute it says that as a police if you're going to take goods to do some inspection you can only keep it for x amount of days but they kept it for longer so the person who was in possession of the car at the time he made a claim and he said that actually um, it should be given back to me. And the courts found that actually, yes, he had a better claim because here's the thing. In English law, the person with possession has a best claim to um, the property, whether it's in land. That's why we have procedures like adverse position, which is changing with registration. But um, possession is absolutely crucial. So the second case, uh, Re Cohen, also shows that it, there was a couple, a husband and a wife. The husband died first. The property was under the wife's name and then the wife died. And so when they were looking at the house, they found like money in the most random places, like on boiler tops. And, and it was a lot of money and it was all scattered around the house. Now, the question was, whose money is that? And, you know, who does it belong to? Because money belongs to the person who's in possession of it. And right now, nobody was in possession of it. Ultimately, the money went into the wife's estate because they said that she owned the property. She was in possession of it even after the husband died. So even if it was the husband's money, the fact that she was the last known person with possession, she has a better claim to the money than anyone else. Again, we're seeing... Um, the Costello principle, um, you know, this is another one where the finder has the best title to an English law. So the third case is Waverley and Fletcher. Now this is where um, you can distinguish. This case is different because this guy was in a park and he was using a metal detector and he found this really expensive brooch and it was under the ground so he got his dog or someone to dig it up and he got the brooch and so the question was who does this brooch belong to the person who owned the park or the person who found it now ultimately the courts ruled in favor of um the person uh, the the person who owned the land now the reason being is because if something is underneath the land it's annexed to the land it's part of the land on top of it's different it's a chateau it's not a fixture it's not part of the land and he would bring in elite st uh, elite um uh can't remember the case uh and and um there's an elite stone case and there's also a Holland and Hodgson case, I think. Yeah, where you would distinguish between shuttles and um, fixtures. So in this case, um, it was different because also if you look at the cash and recode, it wasn't annexed to land. It was found scattered on top of the land in the house. If we look at Costello, it's a car. It's, it's not linked to anything which is registered with a specific owner. Whereas this park, it was clear who was the real owner of it. So when it's underneath the land, then obviously it's a different case. And finally, Parker and British Airways Board. Now, this will probably help to explain Waverley and Fletcher a bit more. What happened is, is that there was a person in the lounge, uh, airport lounge, and Parker, what he did is he found a gold bracelet and then he handed it into lost property at BA and he said that, listen, if you don't find the real owner, give it back to me because... Uh, I have the better claim to it. What BA did instead is that they sold it and they made £80 or 800 I can't remember. They made a substantial amount of money on it. So Parker then claimed against this. He said, that's wrong, it belongs to me. And the courts agreed. They said the, it actually belongs to him. Now, this is because it's... You know, if we were just looking at, like, possession as in who's holding it, yes, then BA would be right. But that's wrong because possession is also linked to control, as we saw in factual possession. You can't just let your children play in the land and say, OK, well, that's factual possession. No, it has to be something more than that. And BA didn't have, like, a lost properties policy. They weren't even interested in claiming in. And I don't even think they bothered to try and find who the real owner was. So they... They, and they didn't take responsibility for anything that was going on in the airport lounge. They said that, you know, this is the lounge for the public. Most people walking in that. They didn't have exclusive possession or control of the land to say what is found on the land is ours. 
And this is different to Waverley and Fletcher because here the gold brooch was found inside the land. So it was part of the land. And who has control of what's underneath the land? The person who owns the land. People walking in and out. So if you drop something, well, you say you don't have enough you know control of the land to say that and that's how it can be distinguished yeah it's really similar to um parker and british sherwood's board but ultimately in english law possession 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 is key um to establishing your title or you know to show that this is my property thank you for watching